beautiful friends and bookish fam. Welcome to the one and only vlog that I'm doing this bookmas. So in full transparency, I actually had the intention of doing at least two vlogs during bookmas. I was going to do at least two week long reading vlogs, but I got derailed pretty early on in December because first of all, if I take any kind of break from vlogging, I completely forget how to vlog and I completely forget to pick up my camera. And so a couple of days had already gone by and I hadn't really done anything. And then I think it was like on the fourth, we got some pretty upsetting news at my job and it just kind of made me unmotivated to do absolutely anything. That's still not resolved. It's not going to be resolved for a while. So that is definitely something that is on my mind and in my heart. But for now, I'm just kind of sitting back and waiting to see what happened. And I'm going to continue on like normal, especially with my booktube content. So I wanted to go ahead and at least do one vlog, especially during this week, which is going to run from December 16th, basically through Christmas Eve. I'm definitely going to try to post this on Christmas Eve, but whether it's going to be early on Christmas Eve or late, I don't know. And I wanted to do that because I have a lot going on this week. So as you probably saw from the B-roll footage, if I did my job yesterday, I went to see Wicked in New Orleans. Now I saw it on Broadway last year and I absolutely adored it. And so when I saw that it was touring, I absolutely had to go again. And then tomorrow I'm getting my hair cut because to be quite honest, y'all, um, I'm not thrilled right now with how my hair is growing out. The layers are kind of getting to me and I want it a little bit more even. So it's going to get pretty short before it starts growing out again. And then on Tuesday, I actually head to California. I'm going out there to see my family for a few days before coming back and being at home for Christmas. And I wanted to take you along with as many of the things as I possibly could. And I thought a vlog would be an awesome way to do it. But really quickly, let me go ahead and just give you a reading update. I am currently in the middle of two books and I'll explain that in a second. The first one I started about four days ago, Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. And y'all, I'm going to be honest and say that I'm not loving this one and I'm not enjoying it hardly at all. Even though I was intimidated by this book, I absolutely expected to love it because in theory, this book should be right up my alley. It is a very character driven story and it covers a lot of harder hitting topics. It follows our main character, Damon, but his nickname is Demon Copperhead. And essentially from the moment that he was born on the floor of a trailer to an 18 year old white trash single mother, his life has been destined to be one bad thing after another. And so this is literally just a chronicle of all of the things that he has to go through. And this is not a short book, y'all. This is about 540 pages. And I had reached roughly, I would say the halfway mark. And I was bored out of my mind because this is so very long and tediously detailed. When we start the story, Demon is basically, I want to say like maybe nine or 10. He's in fifth grade. And by the halfway point, so we've gotten through probably about 250 pages and he's only aged maybe three or four years. So he goes from being an elementary school kid to a middle school kid. And that's it. That is how long and drawn out this story is. It's absolutely every little detail about every little thing that Demon has gone through in his life up until this point. And I just keep waiting for a point or a purpose to the story. I keep waiting to find out why I'm reading this. Like, what is the purpose of telling Demon's story? I'm waiting for something big and momentous to happen. And I'm just not enjoying myself. In fact, I was very, very close to DNFing this story. And then ultimately I was like, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and just push through Demon Copperhead because I could not stand the idea of not finishing it. Even though I wasn't enjoying it all that much, I was like, I'm halfway through. At least I can find out what happened and say that I finished the book and potentially be able to keep this beautiful cover, which I'm absolutely in love with. And I'm devastated that I'm not loving this so much. In fact, it's making me angry that I'm not loving this as much as I wanted to. So that's really the reading update. The book that I started out of frustration when I thought that I was done reading this and I had DNF'd it was a book called Fireworks by Serena Bowen. This is the sixth book in her True North series. It is a series of companions romance novels that are all set in small town Vermont. And we're following a main character in that book named Sky, and kind of a second chance romance with a love that she had as a teenager. It should be something that I'm easily able to dive back into and finish once I finish Demon Copperhead. I would love to finish Demon Copperhead today. I cannot even tell you how much I would love to finish it today. But because I spent almost all day yesterday completely avoiding it, I've lost a day and I still have about three hours of listening time. And because today I'm running sprints, I'm filming and editing all day. I don't think I'm going to have an opportunity to finish this, but I will 100% finish it tomorrow because I'm not heading to California with this book still needing to be completed. All right, y'all, that is the update. I feel like I've been rambling for quite a while, but again, I will try to take you along when I can and give you some reading updates when I have them. So I'll check in with you later. Hey everybody, it is Monday morning at about 10.30. I just got done at the hair salon. I tried to get a couple of clips in there, but literally I walked in the door, I was taken immediately to the chair and bing, bing, boom, I was basically done. So I didn't have the opportunity to do that, but I wanted to come ahead and come on here and give you an update because I actually did finish Demon Copperhead yesterday, but my feelings on it haven't really changed since the update that I gave you yesterday morning. I still really don't understand the purpose of the story except to take you through the terrible life and times of Demon Copperhead. That's literally it. I 
kept waiting for a bigger message and overall purpose, a reason why I was reading the story and I never got it. It was literally just, I wanna say like eight or nine years of one bad thing after another happening to this kid. And I didn't like being in his head. He wasn't a very pleasant character to be in the mind of. And I never really enjoy stories that are told from kids' perspectives anyway. So that was already a strike against it. And overall, I was just expecting a little bit more from the story. I was expecting a little bit more emotion because even though there were a lot of harder hitting elements that were going on in here and there was definitely a lot of things that happened to this kid, I still felt a disconnect. I never felt truly connected to Demon. I never even really cared what happened to him. I was just kind of going through the motions, getting through the story. And I know that's an unpopular opinion. Like a lot of people seem to really love this story, but I'm just not in that camp. I really wish that this had done more for me. I was expecting to love this story and for all intents and purposes, it should have. Like it's a very character driven story with those harder hitting elements, but it lacked emotion in my opinion. There was no emotional impact of this story on me. It never even got to a point where there was like a climactic event or something big that made it all worth it. Nothing ever happened. It was just from start to finish the tedium of the life of Demon Copperhead and all of the bad things that happened to him. And it just wasn't for me. I don't think that I'm going to be rating the story because I honestly don't know what rating it deserves or how I feel about the story, but we're moving on. And I have gone ahead and picked up Fireworks by Serena Bowen. This is the book that I started on Friday when I was so frustrated with Demon Copperhead that I put it down. And this is the sixth book in the True North series, which is a series of companions romance novels by Serena Bowen. They're all set in this small area in Vermont. This story, one of the main characters is Benito Rossi, and he is the brother of two of the other characters that we have followed so far in this series. And he is a detective. He's kind of with drug enforcement. And in this story, he is trying to take down like this big drug operation that's killing a lot of kids. Our other main character, Sky, is somebody that Benito knew way back in the day when they were both living in the same trailer park. And at the time, Sky had a very difficult childhood. She had kind of an unstable mother who could never hold down a job and she was hopping from guy to guy. And at the beginning of the story, she's going back to this man named Jimmy Gage, who she was with briefly when Sky was younger. And they're going back to his trailer park to live with him and his daughter, Rayanne. And Jimmy Gage is not a good guy. And you kind of see how sleazy he is when he's trying to come on to Sky and he's saying really dirty, nasty things. And Sky meets Benito in the trailer park and seeks protection from him. Over time, they start to develop feelings for each other and it seems like it's going to grow into something more, but then something happens, tears them apart. And 12 years later, they are now reconnecting because Sky is returning to Vermont to help Rayanne with something. But Rayanne has up and disappeared and kind of bailed out on Sky. And there's a reason for that. And Benito happens to think that Rayanne might be involved in this drug operation, which just happens to be led by her father, Jimmy Gage. So Benito is trying to take down Jimmy Gage. Sky is still terrified of Jimmy Gage. She doesn't want to be back in Vermont. She hates Vermont, but she's trying to help Benito with Rayanne and get all of this stuff done. This one is kind of leaning more towards romantic suspense, which is definitely different from the other ones in the series. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out. It is certainly not my favorite so far, and I kind of knew it wasn't going to be from basically moment one, because almost as soon as Benito and Sky reconnected, it was like 12 years never happened, and they were instantly kind of like picking back up where they left off, which I don't love. I'm sure that we're going to dive deeper into what actually happened to break them apart 12 years ago. I'm really hoping that it picks up and that I like it better because I really didn't like the last book in the series. So this series is kind of going downhill for me, which is unfortunate because I really enjoyed first four books in the series. And I was hoping to really continue to love it through the final books, which I believe it ends on like book eight or nine. I would love to finish this book today, but I still have around three hours of listening time and I'm about to head home and basically do nothing but edit until I have to head to the gym at 3.30. And then when I'm home from the gym, it's time to cook dinner, watch a Christmas movie, and then basically head to bed because I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning tomorrow to head to New Orleans International Airport. I am all packed. Everything is good and ready to go. But that's the reading update. I'm honestly probably not going to have very many reading updates when I'm in California. In fact, I want to try to finish fireworks as soon as possible so that I have no outstanding book while I'm in California and can really just focus on editing videos as well as maybe catching up on my booktube videos. That's basically all that I plan to do when I'm on the plane, when I'm in my hotel room and things like that. So I don't really want to have to worry about finishing a book. And there's also likely going to be no time to actually read or listen to an audiobook while I'm there. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and head home, have some lunch, and get back to editing.
now. I'm looking really rough, y'all, but to be fair, I have been up since 2.45 a.m. in Mississippi time, and it is now 4 o'clock in the afternoon Mississippi time. It is 2 o'clock in the afternoon here in California. I'm sitting in my hotel room. I literally just got in and got everything situated because it has just been a journey from start to finish. I am currently waiting for my mom to get off work. She gets off work at 6 o'clock, and then we're going to go to dinner, and then after dinner, I'm just coming back here and crashing. Absolutely nothing planned for today. Pretty much nothing much planned for the entirety of the time that I'm here. My mom and I do plan on going to the coast to our favorite spot in Monterey while I'm here and then I do plan on spending at least a few hours with my dad and a cousin that I haven't seen in literal years. But anyway, I realized that I haven't really given you any kind of update since yesterday afternoon after I got my hair cut. It's just been a lot of probably b-roll footage up until this point. But I did want to come on here and update you because I did finish Fireworks by Serena Bowen and ultimately I really enjoyed the story overall. I think I'm going to give it a 3.5 because it wasn't quite memorable enough to be a four stars and it's definitely like not a new favorite. It's not even my new favorite in the series, you know, but I didn't dislike it as much as I thought that I was going to. I did think that it was a little bit different for Serena Bowen because like I mentioned, it's definitely more romantic suspense because there's this whole drug aspect to it, which ultimately ended up being a bigger part of the story than I thought it was going to be. So we're almost kind of like focusing on that almost as much as the relationship between Sky and Benito. Now, I really do feel like it's unbelievable for Sky and Benito to just kind of like pick up where they left off, which is basically what happens. Like Benito has been carrying a torch for Sky for 12 years. Sky has been carrying a torch for Benito. It was a really big misunderstanding that kind of tore them apart 12 years ago. No surprise there. That's always what happens. But basically, Benito has never really gotten over her. Sky has never really gotten over him. And so they see each other and bam, it's like basically like no time has passed at all. I guess I can kind of see, you know, somebody you had really strong feelings for years and years and years ago come back into your life and like stir up all those feelings, especially when there's a lot of unresolved stuff there. One thing I did really like about Sky is that unlike a lot of other heroines and romance novels, she is not a sex confident person. She is very shy with regard to sex and she almost feels a sense of shame with regard to that. And I felt like that was realistic and realistically portrayed. So I really enjoyed that representation because it's not something that you see all that often. I will say that I was a little bit frustrated because at first it seemed like Sky was going to be more of the asexual type of character just because early on in the story she said that she didn't like sex. She didn't want to have sex. She never had an enjoyable sexual experience. But basically as it always turns out, it's just because she never was with the right person. So Benito was like, no, you like sex. You just haven't been with the right person. And lo and behold, he's the right person. So now she's the sexual goddess. So I didn't necessarily appreciate that portion. I would have liked to see a little bit more of an asexual represented character in the story. But overall, I didn't hate it. And I think I did enjoy it more than the last one. In complete honesty, y'all, there is going to be no reading done on this trip whatsoever. And I honestly don't even know if I'm really going to prioritize reading for the rest of the year. I have one other book that I need to read this year. It is Hostage by Claire McIntosh. So this is only partially a reading blog. I will not even be starting hostage until probably Christmas Eve. And by that point, this vlog will basically be ending. But I still hope that you enjoy coming along with me on this California journey. So I'm going to go ahead and get to editing and I will check in with you at some point. Hello, everybody. It is currently Thursday, December 21st. And as promised, absolutely no reading has gotten done since arriving in California. I have basically spent any downtime catching up on my booktube queue and getting some videos edited because I'm still trying to keep on top of bookmas while I'm away. I only I have one other video that I need to edit and upload. But anyway, I'm sitting here in my rental. I'm about to head to pick up my mom and we are heading to Monterey, California. Monterey is a coastal town. It is one of my favorite places in California and it has been many, many years since I've been back. So I'm very glad to go. We're not going to be spending too much time there. It is about two and a half hours away. So between getting there and travel time back, there's only a few hours that we can spend there, but that's totally fine. I don't need to spend the entirety of the day there. I'm just kind of there to soak up the vibes, you know, and maybe get a few souvenirs and and just have a good, good time. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really hoping that the weather holds out because it's been very, very rainy since I arrived in California. I'm going to head to pick her up now and we're just going to have a good day and I'll get some footage when I can. So thank you for coming along with me on this mostly travel vlog with very little reading. I hope that you enjoy and I'll see you a little bit later.
friends, Merry Christmas Eve. As you can probably see, I am home. There was no footage yesterday. I was traveling all day and I am honestly so exhausted. My layover in Austin got extended by quite a bit. I was supposed to originally be home by 9.30 when I originally booked the flight and then it got pushed to 11.30. And then when I landed in Austin after leaving Sacramento, I got a notification that our plane now wasn't even leaving until 11.30. And so I had almost a five hour layover in Austin, which was kind of good because it actually allowed me to edit this vlog. I didn't think that this vlog was going to go up on Christmas Eve at all. I thought it was going to be the one bookmas video that I was very late on, but luckily I got almost everything edited together and I just needed to come on here and do this closeout clip. So in that way it was beneficial, but it also meant that I didn't get into New Orleans until about one o'clock and then it took almost 30 minutes for the baggage carousel to start and for me to get my bag. So by the time I was with my husband, it was almost 1.30 and we live over an hour away from the New Orleans airport. So we didn't get home until almost three o'clock in the morning. And then of course, you know, we had to bring everything in, we had to get settled. And so it was definitely probably close to like 3.30 when I actually fell asleep. It is now about 11 and I just woke up, but I'm probably going to go back to sleep in a little while and just like take a nap. But I wanted to get some things done like this clip. I just want to come on here and close out the vlog. And I hope that you enjoyed coming with me on my little California adventure adventure. I'm really glad I went and I made it short for a reason, but you know, now of course I'm like, oh, I probably should have made it longer, but I did want to be back here for Christmas. I wanted to spend Christmas with Robert. So I would have either needed to leave earlier in December to go see them or taken Robert with me so that he was out there. But of course, then that would mean like boarding our animals and doing all that stuff. So it ended up working out for what I needed it to be, but I do miss them when I leave. So I'm going to stop rambling again. Thank you so much for coming along with me. I hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I hope to do many more vlogs in 2024. I think that's going to be a priority. So please comment down below and let me know if you do enjoy them and what you enjoy seeing in them. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the day, make some coffee, have some breakfast, get the laundry done because there is now a lot of it and try to get this vlog finalized and uploaded before Christmas Eve ends. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.